Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. Today, I want to talk about Night Revels. Uh, Night Revels is the Halloween event that happens every year in DDO. And this year, it was quite different because they made uh, several big changes and we got some cool new stuff and some stuff that returned from last year. So, just to go over the event for those of you all who <clears throat> may not be aware of what it is, basically, this is how the event works. A, an area opens up in House Jurasco, and there are there is one main challenge quest and a variety, I think seven or eight of other subquests. And the way the event works is you have your one main quest, Delira's Graveyard, again in House J, and it's an in, in instance that you you go in there, you kill monsters, and you collect things called keys and also things called chocolates. And from that one main quest in Delirious Graveyard, you wanna go in there and collect keys. What the keys do is allow you entrance. Each key allows one entrance into each of the other quests involved in the event. So there's seven or eight uh, other quests which are basically Halloween themed uh, shortened versions of other quests in the game. So what you do is you get your keys, you go into each of these quests, and you run them for ingredients. And each of these quests will drop different ingredients. Some uh, will drop, uh, some will drop the same as in others. But typically, I think there is two quests that will drop one type of ingredient. And there's a probably about I think about four different types of ingredients, four or five. So you got what you got to do is get your keys. You got to run the quest that have the ingredients you want to collect. And there's a vendor where you can turn in all these ingredients for different items. So you go look at the items you want, and then you you run the corresponding quest to get whatever ingredients you need to get your items. So it's pretty. It's it's a fun event. It's my personally, it's my favorite. It's always been my favorite of the yearly events of the the annual festival type events that DDO has. Now to get into some to some of the changes this year. In the past, the initial graveyard instance had been a public slayer area. So the way it worked in the past is it was just one big public slayer area. Anyone goes, you can go into the slayer area and there's just uh, mobs that will continuously respawn. You go kill them and get your keys and chocolates that way. Now this year it was changed into a private instance. So it was, it's now instead of a public slayer area, it was changed to a private challenge instance. So it worked the same way, except basically you can pretty much the same way, except you can only put six people in there now instead of it being a public area where basically, uh, you know, many, many, many more people can go into it. It's limited to six now. And they did that to reduce uh, basically for performance issues, issues, reasons. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, the this quest this quest was a challenge but a lot of people would just go in there and kill monsters and come out and didn't really treat it like a challenge there wasn't a lot of incentive to actually complete the whole thing you did get a normal chest at the end but there wasn't a, a ton of incentives because uh, well we'll get into this in a minute but a lot of people just kind of treated it the same as last year but it, the instance was capped in the number of people for performance issues reasons uh, this year, some of the changes they made, they added the raid, uh, Eternity Unleashed, back. And it's, it's just a really simple, really short raid. It's not very challenging at all. Actually, none of the uh, quests in this uh in this area were really challenging in this uh, event whole event and that's good that that's the way i think it should be this is supposed to be a social fun event to run i don't think it should be very challenging any of the content personally even if you run it at the max level uh where whereas uh, these all these quests are treated as challenges so you can run them up to level 35 even if you run them up to level 35 i had no issues soloing it on level 35 so it's not they're not that challenging so just keep that in mind that's 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 not a bad thing at all and i even sold the raid so it's not it's it's not a, a, an event meant to really challenge you as a player it's more a thing just to run with friends and be social and collect things and celebrate halloween um, there's some really good items available in the event in particular three i i think the things everybody should get every year are the the candies there's three really good candies and they intentionally use these candies, as far as I can tell, to, to get people to run the event every year because they make them really good, really nice bonuses, except they're really easy to get. They don't take much at all. I think I got all three of the candies like in 40 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. It, it's not hard to get enough ingredients for the candies. Uh, the, the, what the candies do is uh, basically they are... Uh, 
they're buffs essentially and they all have one hour duration and a two hour cooldown uh what they do is the, there's the shadow apple here as you can see on the screen the shadow apple is plus five melee power range power and plus 10 universal spell power for one hour caramel bite is plus five prr mr for an hour and then the cinnamon cloud gives you a dodge bonus equal to your listen score for one hour so that's really cool these candies are all really easy to get so i think these are probably uh, some of the best items that the event has to offer uh, some of the, the other really good items there are augments that are stacking festive uh, bonuses to wisdom and intelligence so you can get plus two augments for those i know those are really popular i have the wisdom one it's really cool it's good uh, I also didn't realize I already had the wisdom one <laughs> and I like an idiot got farmed out another one and then I realized after I equipped it that I didn't need it but that's another that's another uh, topic entirely okay um, there's a lot of other useful items in in the event I, I really have liked the cloak in the past and when I would run epic past lives I would still use the cloak of night it's really good and worth getting I think there's a, a lot of other things so if you know, if you the event's almost over as of the time of this video, it's only got until November fourth, uh, so you might have some time left to get the stuff if you get in there now. But uh, there are a variety of items that have longer grinds, but some people like certain ones. But I think as far as things that are going to appeal to everybody, I think the augments, the, the augments and the candies are are kind of the highlight of the event for me. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, the quest. So let's talk a little bit about the quest. The the mini shortened version of other quests, uh, they are very well done. They are quick to complete, which is a good thing. Like the event to me, it doesn't feel overly grindy just because all of these quests are really, sh the, well actually the challenges technically, they're really shortened versions of the other quests. And they just, it doesn't feel that grindy because again, you can complete them all really, really fast, like five minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, they even have a version of the Haverdasher, which I believe is the single shortest quest in the game. It literally takes like, what, a minute, two minutes? It's really short. So uh, just depending on, well, depending on what uh, challenge level you, you do it on, but it's really, really, really short. It's like two rooms. Okay, so let's talk, I guess, more, and now I've talked more about the things I've liked about the event. Let's talk about, I guess, the thing, well, the things I didn't like as much. Now, I will say that the, this is the best Night Revels that we've ever had in terms of lag because of the changes they made. Uh, they made the instances capped at six for, for the Delirious Graveyard instance. And for the, those of y'all who are probably aware, a lot of you are probably aware that that has been kind of a almost a meme at this point for the event, like the, the lag uh, from uh, Night Revels or Maybar, as it was known in the past. And changing it to six really really helped that I mean there I didn't notice much lag at all on the server whereas in previous years I noticed a ton um, now while the lag less lag is great and it's good that the event ran well in terms of performance I didn't really like what they did to it personally uh, I'm happy I like I'm satisfied with it but I hope that in the future they find some way to kind of encourage more community more of a community experience there wasn't much reason to not just solo everything because again they, they made the the delirious graveyard instance a challenge and i felt like you could actually collect keys at least from my experience a lot faster by just soloing instead of grouping and all these quests i felt were they're not very challenging uh, which is again a good thing i think but be, the downside of that is um, i felt they were just easy to just solo and you can collect your ingredients probably even faster than trying to deal with getting a group together uh, and uh, the thing is, this is supposed to be a community experience in my eyes. So I want to see grouping be rewarded more. Like even in the in the Lear's graveyard, uh, the Lear's graveyard instance, for example, they didn't actually give much of a reward for actually completing that instance. So if the challenge instance was, I guess, if it was, uh, if it, it, maybe the chest at the end would give you a key and or something, a guaranteed key drop, it would give you more of a reason to group because you could, I guess. Uh, get through it faster but i still think a lot of people would solo it in that in that case because again it's not too hard to solo but uh i think we need to see i guess more reasons to group in the future uh, and more rewards for that particularly key more key rewards to kind of compete with soloing because i feel like in the past uh, a lot of the fun of the event even though it caused a lot of lag a lot of the fun was just getting in there in the graveyard with just random people and just messing around uh slaying stuff together 
and that while the performance is the performance uh, of the game went way up in terms of this event uh, just in terms of not having lag i think the community experience suffered a little bit this year because of that change so i want to see them do something to encourage more grouping in the future but uh you know i will say overall even though i the event i think does have some design flaws it was still a very good event I, i'm not i'm still happy with it still really fun I just think it could be better in terms of community of a community experience, but still a really good event. And even if it changes, it doesn't change in terms of format and it stays like this next year, I'll still be pretty happy with it. Cause I, I still had fun, even though I did uh, feel like I was really encouraged to solo the whole thing. So guys, yeah, let me know what you thought about the event. Um, these are just my thoughts, really good events. Still my favorite event in the, in DDO. Um, I would be interested in reading your comments. That is going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you next time. Take care.